This video is brought to you by the Logitech Lightspeed wireless range of keyboards, mice and headsets, the benchmark in wireless gaming performance. Over the past couple of years, we've experienced a rise in the popularity of FPGA within the retro gaming scene, and perhaps one of the most interesting projects in this space is the Mr. FPGA. Now, you've probably heard of Mr. Some of you probably already use it, while others are perhaps curious about it. The scope of the project is huge, however, so I wanted to share my experiences with Mr. over the recent weeks while providing a primer of sorts for those that haven't used it. You see, over the holiday break, I spent some time configuring a Mr. Kiosk of sorts that I thought was pretty fun. Hopefully I can share some ideas to make a project like this feasible for anybody that wants to give it a shot. I also want to talk about various arcade cores that have been developed for Mr. over the past couple of years, allowing for zero-leg, ultra-accurate reproduction of classic games. All that and more is coming up on this episode of DF Retro. At its core, Mister is an open platform built around a DE10 Nano FPGA development board along with its various add-ons. The idea to recreate classic hardware in HDL to more accurately simulate classic consoles, computers, and arcade machines. The community around Mister has fully embraced the hardware and there is a huge range of cores available covering many 8 and 16-bit systems and beyond. I purchased my Mr. Fully Loaded from Mr. Add-ons. This includes the DE10 Nano board itself, the I.O. board, and a multi-port USB hub all housed within this small case. A new aluminum case was recently developed and it looks fantastic as well. Once you get your hands on the Mr. though, setup is relatively straightforward. If you can configure something like a Raspberry Pi, the Mr. should be no problem. There are plenty of guides and videos online if you get stuck, so it shouldn't be a problem to get going. Okay, but what makes the Mr. worth playing versus, say, software emulation or original hardware? Well, firstly, FPGA cores, when completed, enable near-perfect accuracy, simulating the original hardware at a circuit level. Psycho-accurate emulation is definitely possible on the PC already, but only select systems have corresponding emulators, and less capable systems can struggle to deliver perfect performance. Packing all of this into a small case with minimal power draw is a huge part of the appeal of Mr. Beyond this, the Mr. also supports a wide range of controllers and is capable of offering zero-leg gameplay across the board. Another key benefit of the Mr. is the flexibility in terms of video outputs. Naturally, digital video output is supported via HDMI, and it has a lot of wonderful scaling modes to fit your display. But with the I.O. board, a DE15 connector also becomes available, allowing you to connect the Mr. to an analog display, such as a CRT. The benefit here is that this enables proper 15 kHz output at the original refresh rate and resolution. So pairing your Mr. with a CRT monitor can deliver an experience that looks very close to what you might have seen in an actual arcade. Which brings me to this idea to create a small Mr. setup that would be easy to jump into at any point, while supporting both Yoko and Tate gameplay. Now over the years I've spent time cramming a lot of gear into my workspace. From the retro setup here, with a CRT display of course, to the modern setup for the latest consoles. But after placing an arcade stick on top of this small shelf one day, I realized it was the perfect height for actual gameplay. Thus an idea was born to create a small arcade-like nook where I could walk up to and just play the Mr. at any point. Now given the chance, I always prefer playing on a CRT of course, but building a setup that allows you to rotate a CRT requires a lot of space and I wanted something compact. So the first part of the puzzle then is of course finding a screen. In my case I settled for a small generic 9.7 inch LCD. 
you can find these on eBay and Amazon for dirt cheap. I opted to stick with a 4x3 display to avoid black bars on the left and right. It just works better for a project like this. Now, it's also possible to pick up one of these screens. It's basically an LCD designed for an iPad, one of the Retina displays. It has a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and Mr. actually has a specific mode just for the screen. You can fit this in a generic 9.7 inch capable case like this one here for instance, though the installation isn't going to necessarily look factory, if you know what I mean. When it comes to screen selection, you'll probably want to stick with an IPS LCD for quality viewing angles and reasonable pixel response. I went with this one due to its basic lightweight stand, which allows you to rotate the screen side to side if you desire. You can go as big or as small as you like, but you should try to find a size that's comfortable for your specific viewing distance. With the screen mounted then, I ran the cables down the wall to a surge protector below, and of course to the mister itself. Next up though is the audio, and yes, most screens have built-in speakers already, but I wanted something that sounded a little better, so I went with this cheap soundbar, I think it was 29 euros on Amazon. And basically it's powered by USB, has its own internal battery, and can accept analog audio input. Because the Mister has plenty of USB ports available when using the USB hub, I was able to plug it right in there, and it receives power from the Mister when it's running. With this then, I have the video output on this small LCD screen, and the audio coming from the soundbar. I mounted the soundbar using these L brackets. It's not the neatest installation, I admit, but it gets the job done and it kind of gives you an idea of what you need to make it work. Now, as for the Mr. itself, I also use these small white brackets here to affix the little Mr. box directly to the wall. It slides right in here neatly and allows access to all of the necessary ports for playing games. So basically, all I really needed to make this setup work was a small section of empty wall in one of my rooms. This is the key to this sort of setup. You don't need a lot of space to make it work and it can be very comfortable to use. The critical part, however, lies in the controls. I'm using this half height shelf here to hold my Japanese PlayStation 2 collection. And it just so happens that it's the perfect height for me when an arcade stick is placed on top. Now, you don't need to use a shelf like this, of course. I simply went with this due to its utility for holding games and the arcade stick, but it is a cool option and it's easy to test if you go shopping for such a shelf. The stick itself then is a USB arcade stick that was sold to use alongside the Astro City mini cabinet from Sega. Now, this cab was only sold in Japan and features a wide range of Sega games. If you want me to take a look at this in the future, do let me know because we can certainly do that. The stick itself has enough buttons and functionality to support any core from the mister that you might throw at it, save for maybe some of the computer related cores. You can of course use any other USB controller that you desire, but this was a great fit for me. So as you can see, it's really kind of a simplistic setup and it doesn't require a lot of space, yet it delivers an arcade-like experience, at least somewhat. It's more comfortable to use than say a miniature cabinet due to the position of the screen and controls. You can adjust it to your liking to fit your own height and comfort level. Of course, given the choice, I would prefer to use something like the Mistercade, which is a board designed to allow you to use the Mister with a JAMA compatible arcade cabinet. This with a CRT would be a perfect fit. I've had a great time playing on this little setup though, and the ability to rotate the screen helps immensely with games designed for Tate play. All told, for a relatively meager sum, you can have a great little arcade setup in just about any room in your house, and it won't really look that bad either, so it's not going to stick out like a huge arcade cabinet might. Of course, if you have the space, you can certainly go bigger, bring in the CRTs, and do something a little bit more elaborate, specifically something that supports two-player simultaneous play from the same kiosk. But okay, let's say you get all this set up then. What can you actually do with Mr.? Well, that is a huge topic indeed. Yes, consoles are supported as you would expect. This includes systems such as the Sega Mega Drive, the Super NES, the PC Engine, and even handhelds like Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. But for me, that's not the main draw. I'm more about the arcade games. For starters, Neo Geo is fully supported in Mister, provided you have the RAM upgrade. So technically the AES is a home system, of course, but to me, Neo Geo is an arcade machine. Now, 
the entire library can now be played on Mr. with extreme accuracy. When considering the unbelievably high prices of individual Neo Geo games, it doesn't really make sense to get into collecting for the system at this point, and although there are other ways to play Neo Geo games still on other platforms, I feel like the Mr. is a really great way to get a feel for the library as a whole. The interface itself is also very simple to use and works between all different supported games. You can set up your controls, your visuals, etc. and you're ready to go. But it's the individual cores that are perhaps even more interesting. For starters, there's plenty of early 80s and other classic arcade games available. Games like Donkey Kong, Zaxxon, Puyan, and more.